for some of our Nigerian viewers. You would have seen my earlier interview with the Senior Special Assistant to the President of Media and Publicity, Malangar Shehu, on the business uh, of the President and some of the top government officials in China at the FOCAC meeting. Tonight, we've been looking at the issues surrounding Oshun State governorship election, the election which will happen in another 19 days on the 22nd of September 2018. Let me also give you a hint that China Television will have a hand right on the shadow and we will give you all of the stories coming from Ocean State. We have them all covered for you, including the election from INEC to the political parties to what the voters want and what the people need to know. Thank you so much, everyone, for your time tonight on the program. My partner today on the program, the INEC Resident Electoral Commission, the man that will be in charge of uh, the proceeding in Ocean State for the election, Mr. Olusegun Agbaje, and uh, beside him is uh, an election observer, a national coordinator of election monitor, Mr. Abiodun Ajijala. Thank you so much for your time, gentlemen. Uh, Ms. Ajijala, you were talking about some of the things that we need to know as regarding uh, Oshun State governorship election. We do know Oshun State will have more logistical uh, challenges that it will pose to INEC. What more do we need to know? Yes, thank you very much. Also, um, if you look at the equity governorship election, essentially it was a two-horse race whereby we had the two dominant parties. Uh, I mean, we had 37 candidates, but we had two dominant parties, and eventually even the results showed that 97% of the votes cast went to the uh, two dominant parties, and just 3% went to the remaining 35 parties. But if you look at Oshun, the, the uh, landscape seems to be much more um, competitive. And uh, you cannot easily predict or say it will be this or that. And um, that also means that if an election is going to be more competitive, it means that there is more uh, need to focus on security, not in terms of number, but effectiveness of the deployment. So there are areas, um, there will be definitely increased number of flashpoints in a, high, in a more highly contested or more competitive election. So one of the things we are also hoping is that the security agencies, good enough, last week Thursday, there was an election security summit held in Oshogbo where the Inspector General of Police was there, also the Honorable Resident Electoral Commissioner and other major stakeholders were there, the Honorable of IFE and others, to look at these issues. Um, because I think with this level of competition and this diverse crowd and, you know, many really uh, formidable candidates, I think there's an important need to give security a good uh, note in this election as well. Mr. Agbaje, let's, let's take a look at one critical factor that has emerged as a, a big menace in our elections, which is the issue of vote buying. It will come up. Uh, a lot of people have predicted that politicians will want to buy votes. What is INEC doing to make sure that this does not happen in Ocean State? Uh, thank you very much. At several fora, we have made it known to our people that, uh, number one, election should not be an issue of uh, do or die. And secondly, election should be seen as a sort of a game among political actors. And uh, what has happened in the recent elections of the commission have you prepared for a serious election, coming to the point, period or to the point, to the point of election, having people now selling or buying votes is a very, very critical and embarrassing matter to the commission. The commission has looked at it, and the commission is even still looking at it, but already the commission has decided that we are going to rearrange our polling booths in such a way that uh, voters, after casting their ballot, will not be uh, well positioned to be able to exhibit their ballot paper to outsiders. And uh, we are also looking at possibilities of also ensuring that the police this time around are very active to ensure that they do not allow people to exhibit their ballot papers. In fact, the electoral law says that uh, it is an electoral offense. For instance, in some of the sections, if you look at section, section S125 and uh, section 124, of the electoral act, he specifically mentioned that a person who gives voters money 
to vote for or refrain from voting for a candidate is an electoral offense. And anybody that is found guilty is liable to a fine of 100,000 naira or 12 months imprisonment. So this is a critical issue that we and the security agencies, particularly the police, can leverage upon to ensure that uh, people that are caught are also immediately charged to court and prosecuted. If we have a number of people to arrest and to uh, investigate and prosecute, I'm sure our people will learn lessons from this. But we are also talking to the politicians as well as the people of Oshun that selling your vote is a very, very dangerous issue. It means you are selling your future. You are selling the possibility of having good hospitals, having good schools for, for your children, and having good roads and many other things that go with good governance. And that if people sell their votes, they are bound to lose. And those who are buying a vote too, it's also not good for them. Um, the the ad hoc officials you are using, uh, you're using I, uh, the NYC ad hoc officials that you are using. How many of them are you using? Are they from the, uh, the previous uh, election you had in the past? Or what constitutes some of the ad hoc officials? Uh, we are taking a uh, ad hoc official from four major points in Ocean State. One is the NYC that is giving us more than almost 60% of the workers. We have had about 8,000 8, before. Now we have some people that are in, in, uh, undergoing their training at the NYC orientation camp. And we also intend to take a, a PS, a PO, APO's training to the camp to also uh, lecture them there. So apparently we are targeting about 9,000 9, coppers out of the city, about 16,000 coppers, uh, I mean, workers we are using for this election. Uh, we also have OAU, Abafinola University of Ilife, where we are targeting over 3,000 students that are going to work with us. Federal uh, Polytechnic at Ede is also giving us about 2,000 students. And out of the 70, 70 uh, federal government establishments in Ocean State, we are also having about 1.2, I mean 1,500. Right. So apparently, okay. we don't have any problem with our adult staff. Okay. Good. Let's close the program and let me allow Ms. Ajola to do that for us. In 30 seconds, what are your greatest fears for this election in Ocean State, Ms. Ajola? Um, well, I think, as I said, logistics and security is an important issue. Um, vote buying, of course, critically is an important issue. I think looking at the 2014 Ekiti Oshun election, it was a very good election with 53% voter turnout. 750,000 people came out. Um, beating that is not going to be easy. Um, so I think that's also going to be an issue. Uh, but all in all, I think security and uh, logistics, INEC needs to focus on that the most. Well, that's how far... We can go. We need to anchor here at this point. Many thanks. Uh, Mr. Olusha Gwagbaje, it's always a pleasure uh, seeing you on the program. Good to see you again, Mr. Agbaje, the rec for Oshun State. We, I guess we'll be seeing on the field when we come down to Oshun State for the election. Mr. Ajijala, thank you for coming on the program. And that's our show, everyone. Thank you for being part of it. I'm Shumwa Kimbalui. Bye-bye.